Now let's talk about some of the various management specializations and skills. At each level of managers, management, at each level of management, the different managers specialize in areas of finance, production, operations, human resources, etc. While larger firms will most likely all have these managers, in smaller fam firms, these important tasks may fall onto the owner. The financial manager focuses on obtaining money needed for successful operations uh, in the organization, also using the money, managing budgets in support of organizational goals, producing financial reports, etc. This is where we have accounting, managerial accounting, cost accounting, all of those kinds of accounting functions, but also finance functions like fundraising, but also in doing capital budgeting and those kinds of activities. Production and operations managers develop and administer those various kinds of activities that are used in the process of transformation where goods, where inputs like raw materials, human resources, technology, etc., are transformed into the products and services that are sold in the, micro, in the marketplace. Human resource managers, of course, handle all of the functions of staffing, dealing with employees, hiring, firing, creating incentive programs, uh, and different kinds of training programs, etc. Also, we have marketing managers. They're responsible for product planning, product management, pricing, promoting their different products, making them available to customers. There's, uh, they, they also handle the distribution or the placement of the various products and services in the marketplace, often called the three P's of management, product or of marketing, product, placement, pricing, and promotion. Also, we have information technology managers, increasingly important, implementing, maintaining the, inf the technology infrastructure used by people, their computers, the operating systems underneath, increasingly the, secure the cybersecurity implementations in organizations. And administrative managers manage entire businesses or major segments, or they handle certain functions like call centers and the like. Um, Generally, at a higher level, when someone's managing other market, managing marketing, information technology, product operations, when they're managing those managers, they're often called general managers, which have which operate managing a whole bunch of different functions. General management is a pathway to the C-suite, up to the CEO and the COO type of functions. As digital technology and automation become more important in business, many managerial functions are augmented or oftentimes even replaced with, with these new technologies and are increasingly, that's increasingly occurring, occurring. However, the opposite has also proven to be true. Managers can still be necessary, but they have to be very, very good at using these technologies. Technology and technical leadership skills are valued more highly among today's managers as their former roles of overseeing employees on a production line have declined and they now have to manage the technology implication and the interface and communication among employees. These duties are now delegated to employees who oversee the operations of the, of the machines at, on the production lines in various ways. There are also different types of managerial roles. When you're a manager, whether you're planning, or controlling, or staffing, or organizing, you're still, you're doing multiple different roles. Sometimes it's a decisional role, which means that you have to make decisions about how to allocate resources and whom to, to whom to give prod, uh, give give responsibility to, handle handle expedite situations where events occur that is disturbances, um, allocate resources, negotiate among work groups, those kinds of things. These are decisional roles. You also have informational roles, monitoring what's happening, observing, interpreting and then uh, d defining or d synthesizing into, a, into, a, into a, a reaction that the organization could follow, disseminate that information, and also speak for that organization on a broader scale. And of course, there's the interpersonal 
activities, acting as a figurehead for the group, being a leader, a liaison with other groups. Those kind of functions can be very important ones in organizations. Also want to talk about some of the different skills that are necessary. For example, technical expertise. Uh, this is the specialized knowledge for the area under which you're supervising, a competence in that area. If you're a technology manager, you, have, you should have some technology skills, competency in it, so you can speak the same language, understand people's issues, and of course identify problems. Marketing, you want to have techno technical marketing skills to manage marketing people so that you can understand what they're trying to accomplish and communicate clearly and effectively with them, for example. Mostly technology expertise is necessary at first line. It becomes also necessary in middle management in many ways. Uh, it's also necessary at top management. Many CEOs are engineers or financial managers, but it all it's more at a general abstract level being able to understand the importance of technical expertise when you get into higher levels. Never underestimate how important it is to understand the technical details of the organization that you are supposed to manage. Other types of skills are also necessary. Conceptual skills, for example. These are the ability to think in abstract terms, to be able to organize thoughts into a pattern that you can use then to interpret, understand, and communicate to others. This is needed more by top level managers and middle managers, but certainly it's a skill that you can develop at the lower in a, in a line manager operation, which then becomes an important reason that you're promoted into higher roles because you can conceptualize the needs of the business at an abstract level, which can become quite important to move the company into the future. Talking about a specific manager, for example, the financial managers are responsible for obtaining necessary funding for organizations to succeed and, and the like. Therefore, you need technical skills, the being able to understand the, the specifics of a financing contract, for example, uh, the, the rates and the fees and the like, uh, and also the time value of money issues, which we get to later in the course. Uh, but you also have to have, if you're more senior, conceptual level to understand the kind of financing that's necessary and how you apply different kind of funding to different types of problems. Example, a funding manager might, of a city might hedge funds necessary, look at various kinds of approaches. You might want to hedge insurance or interest rate risk or, trans, uh, or uh, exchange rate risk in foreign markets, understanding those details, but also, as importantly, understand when to use these different types of technical skills. There's also analytical skills. Uh, this is the ability to identify relevant issues, to recognize their importance, and understand the relationships between those important items. Also, to perceive the underlying causes of a given situation. Analytical skills are most important at the, for the success of top-level management because you're res and often resolving ethical issues that require analytical skills. But also these are important as you go into middle management and also online management. So all of these skills can, you can develop early in your career, grow them as you promote it as you're promoted up into higher levels of accountability and authority. We can never forget the importance of human relations skills. These are the skills that allow you to be effect, to effectively work with people. It's the ability to work with them and deal with individual needs and individual perspectives and personalities, both inside and outside the organization. They're especially important in organizations that provide services, such as hospitals, airlines, and banks, where interaction with customers and stakeholders is an important part or enabler of the success of the business. Those of, who relate to others can communicate well with them. They can understand their needs, show a true appreciation for what others are trying to accomplish and what's important to them. And these individuals are generally more successful than managers who are unable to do or lack some of these skills. Important things to hone early, early in your career, being able to work with and, and help help make successful groups of diverse individuals with diverse talents and perspectives. 
in the next le uh, lecture we'll just dive very briefly and quickly into some leadership basics.